How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here. I'm with my buddy Seth and we're going to teach you how to get off the ground for the first time with your FPV quad. We're at this wide open field at Dorothea Dix Park away from trees, power lines, other people. We're trying to make this as safe and effective as possible. Uh, Seth, so what are, where are we at with our quad right now? So to get to this point, we've programmed everything in beta flight. Uh, we've tested our video signal, make sure that works. Uh, we've tested it on the bench, make sure our motors spin up. Uh, we've tested our fail safe on the bench to make sure the quad does stop when we uh, lose signal. Before you jump into this, you might want to check out a simulator. Uh, spend a couple hours flying around. Even after you watch this video, go back in the simulator and try out the stuff you learned today. So today we're going to be flying in mode two, which means your throttle is going to be on your left stick, up and down. Your yaw is going to be on your left stick, left and right. On the right stick, we're going to have pitch, forward and back, and we're going to have roll left and right. Uh, mode 2 is going to be the most standard way. You're going to get a controller, so there's really no need to worry about mode 1. Uh, we're going to focus on mode 2 for right now. Now for this quad that I'm using, I have two cameras. One is a GoPro for HD quality footage that I can post on YouTube. But here is the camera that we're going to be actually looking through for our FPV feed. And we're going to be adjusting its pitch uh, to change the way that it flies, or rather how the pilot flies the quad. As we fly and we try to maintain a level horizon while we fly to maintain orientation, this camera angle pitch will determine how we fly the quad. So a higher pitched FPV camera will cause us to tilt our drone forward more and increase speed, whereas a lower camera pitch uh, will see the horizon uh, when the quad is not quite pitched so much forward and we won't be moving around at breakneck speed. So keep that in mind. All right, so Seth is going to show us how to do a line of sight hover as our first maiden flight with this. Um, but what we're going to do is use acro mode to do that. Acro mode is a unstabilized mode for flying these quads. You also have modes like angle mode, which allows the accelerometer in your quad to maintain a bit of stabilization and it won't allow you to maybe do flips or rolls or you know, nose dive into the ground to a certain degree. But we're going to be using acro mode, which is a completely manual mode. And it's really the mode that we suggest you start out with and practice with. Now, if you're scared of putting in acro mode, you're scared you might not have full control over it, it's okay. Uh, it is kind of scary at first, but trust me, if you start in acro mode, it's going to teach you really good habits and you're going to be a lot better off in the long run. Today, we're going to be using a free well gear landing pad, takeoff pad. Basically what this does, it gives us a nice flat surface to take off from. A lot of times when you're out in the field, you might have hills, you might have tall grass that can get in your um, propellers. Uh, it's always good to have a nice flat surface to take off from. Okay, so now that we have our quad on the ground, um, the most important thing to do is always have your kill switch or arm switch. Um, I have mine set on the very back switch. All I have to do is flip it down to arm it, flip it up to disarm it. This is very important because you don't want to get out of control and not know how to shut your quad down and end up hurting somebody or losing your quad. All right, so we've got our quad on the ground facing away from us. Uh, you don't want to put your quad down facing towards you because if you take off, uh, it's going to come right towards you and that's going to be a bad day for everybody. So quad always faces away from you when you take off. Nobody's around it. Uh, we're going to flip our arm switch on the back. The motors will start spinning. You're going to give it a little bit of throttle. You're going to hear the motors get loud. It's OK. You're going to get a little more throttle till you're just barely off the ground and then I want you to cut it. Now your quad should fall down to the ground. It's okay, because it's on grass. It's not gonna get hurt. And we're gonna do that step one more time. We're gonna arm it again, and we're gonna kill it one more time, just to make sure you guys understand how to kill your quad in case you get in any types of sticky situations. We're gonna arm it, raise the throttle. You're gonna hear the motors get louder, and you're gonna get a little bit of power off the ground and cut it, and that's it. Now that we've learned how to arm our quad and disarm it in case anything goes wrong, we're going to arm our quad and try to hover. Now, one of the main things you got to remember is you do not want to make drastic movements with your stick while you're trying to hover. If you go full right roll or full left roll or any of these directions full all the way to the corner to the sides, you're going to spiral out of control or flip really quick and you're going to crash. So we're going to take it nice and easy. We're going to arm our quad with our switch. We're going to give a little bit of throttle. And once we hover, we're going to make really small movements. Now, at any point you get uncomfortable or you lose control, there's always a kill switch. So here we go, armed it, a little bit of throttle, a little bit more, we're off the ground. And now, my throttle is staying the same, 
and I'm making very small micro corrections with my right stick. Uh, this takes a little bit of practice, so if you get if you start going too much one way or other, just kill it. I'll give you a quick example of what happens when you do a really sharp movement. So right now I'm going to give a real sharp movement to the right, and it's going to roll out of control, and that's what's going to happen. All right, so while Ed's getting ready, he is. Um, getting the GoPro hooked up. He's getting the goggles on to make sure he is gonna be on the right channel. Um, again, guys, if you're flying with more than one person, it's always a good idea to have a spotter to make sure the area is clear. You know, a lot of these parks we fly at, uh, sometimes there's people walking through with dogs, whatnot. The last thing you wanna do is injure somebody, injure yourself, injure an animal. Also, when you come up to a new group of guys, if you've never flown with anybody, the first thing you wanna do is ask what channel everybody's on, what channel do I need to be on, if you're not sure, people will be more than glad to help you out because they know you're trying to do the right thing. Now I'm all geared up. What I'm going to do now is take off with my quad in acro mode with the goggles down. Okay, we're looking through the GoPro footage of this quad right now. And you'll see on the upper right of my controller, I'm using this switch as my arm switch. So I press that and uh, the spinner, <laughs> the spin is, the quad starts to spin up with the motors and we can take off. So I'm going to throttle up with my left thumbstick up very slowly. Here those motors start to spin up and we have liftoff. Now right now I'm basically just kind of going forward a little bit which means I'm pitched forward just a hair and I'm maintaining that throttle value that took me off the landing pad in the first place. I'm turning right very slowly by incorporating a little bit of yaw and a little bit of roll and maintaining my throttle value so that I don't go into those trees. I'm turning very slowly and you can see that uh, we're actually heading back to where we first uh, started taking off. Now we're coming back to where we started to take off. I'm going to roll to the right just a hair with a little bit of yaw and maintaining throttle value and I'm turning away from us and continuing to uh, make this lap around this field. Now I'm gonna continue to move around in just a circle, a controlled circle, making sure that I maintain altitude as well as uh, make sure that I'm not moving the sticks too hard in any one direction. One thing to uh, kind of keep in mind, it's kind of like driving. If you're going along the highway, you don't necessarily make really hard turns with the steering wheel. Uh, that'll just you know cause you to spin out of control. Rather, you're going to make small adjustments with your steering wheel. So same type of thing with the quad. So we've always been rolling to the right with our quad. We're going to now roll left and a little bit of yaw to the left. And that's gonna cause us to go left. Now you see the trees and you see I lost a little bit of altitude. So I pushed up with the altitude just a hair and we're going to maintain this altitude that we've been working with this entire time. I'm going to press a little harder on yaw and roll to get us back to um, a home trajectory here. And I'm gonna stop moving that direction in order to balance us back out and have us go straight. Here we are heading back and I'm going to make one more turn to the right. A little bit of yaw, a little bit of roll. The reason we incorporate yaw is to level us out. If I'm just rolling to the right, then I'll continue to roll and spiral, spiral into the ground. But adding a little bit of yaw in the same direction as your roll will allow your quad to maintain a level horizon as you turn. Now I'm gonna get a little bit of height here, so that means I'm going to pitch up and I'm going to throttle up and I'm gonna get to about 30 feet or so. Now this is going to be around the tops of the trees and you can see that because of my camera angle and how high I'm pointed up, a simple hover kind of makes me lose a uh, view of the ground. I don't see what's directly below me or even what's in front of my quad a couple uh, dozen feet. I only see the very far horizon. So if I wanna see what's below me, I'm gonna have to pitch down. And that's pitching down with my right stick. And now I'm going to turn to come back because I'm getting a little far away from us. But you can see that if I want to actually see what's below me, I have to pitch down. It's also going to cause me to lose altitude a little bit and subsequently it's going to make me speed up. So you have to be aware of that. And if you want to slow down, you're going to have to pitch back up or do a turn with a roll and yaw in order to cut some of that um, horizontal and vertical speed that you picked up 
uh, by pitching down while maintaining a throttle. So I'm going to come over here and land because we do have some people coming by and I'm not going to try and land on the landing pad. That's, that's going to be a tall order for us. But what I'm going to do is turn toward us. I can see my, myself right there. I'm going to inch my way over here very slowly, very controlled. If I'm heading toward me too quickly, I have my finger on my arm switch so I can cut it and uh, land safely. But since I'm right here hovering, what I can do is lower my throttle. I don't want to lower all the way down without disarming because then I'll start to chew up grass. I might start bouncing. The quad might bounce up and down. Um, so I really don't want to disarm uh, while touching the ground. I want to disarm slightly before touching the ground. So here we go. I'm going to lower the quad and disarm now. And there we go. I landed, but I didn't cut, cut up any of the grass. I didn't bounce around. My props didn't get all cut up in the ground and cause a bunch of dust and dirt to kick up. Okay guys, Ed just show you how to land properly. Um, I'm going to give you a prime example of why it's always good to have a spotter. Ed was up in there flying around. I was watching the field. We had a group of people walk up behind us, uh, soccer balls, dogs, probably the worst case scenario you can get when you're trying to fly quads. Uh, that's why it's important to always have a spotter. Uh, you just never know. You know, they came around the corner. Luckily, I saw them. It wasn't close to them. Uh, told Ed to go ahead and land, and that's what you want to do. You may have noticed Ed standing up when he flies. I prefer sitting down. Um, it's really preference to me. I feel more grounded when I'm sitting down. Um, I just feel like I'm in more control, but try both. Uh, some people get dizzy when they stand up. If you do, just sit down and everything should be all right. Um, before we get started, uh, we are watching my actual uh, FPV camera feed through OSD um, and it's being recorded on DVR through the goggles. So uh, you see the label in the middle of the screen, JSPH, that's the uh, quad name. Um, on the left, you have our battery voltage, which is 16.5. It should be 16.8, but uh, we hovered it a little bit. I do always have a timer going um, in the bottom left. Um, usually you get about two minutes, uh, two and a half minutes, maybe even three, three and a half, but I uh, do not want to push it. These batteries we fly aren't meant for very long flights. I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna arm our switch. We're gonna hover. A little bit off the ground, more throttle, hover, and we're off. Now what I'm doing, I'm pressing forward on the pitch. I'm going forward. If I want to turn right, I'm yawing and rolling to the right a little bit, nice and smooth. Again, you don't want to make drastic movements, so it's going to send you flying all over the place. So real smooth, real casual turns. We're going to the left. We're yawing left and rolling left. Um, and one of the things I wanted to point out about acro mode um, if I push to the left on roll, I keep going to the left until I correct myself. Um, you're going to have to get used to that aspect also. Um, same thing as pitch. If I pitch forward, I keep going forward. Even if, you know, if I don't touch anything, I just keep going that way. So most of the flying we do is correcting, not actually kind of turning. If I'm turning this way and I keep it, I keep going into the ground. Okay, now I punch out to get a little height. Um, so you just always want to be aware of the fact that you are going to have to correct whatever move you make. You've got to counter that to get going back the right way. Okay, I've spotted the landing area. I'm straightening out. Now when I come in, I'm at an easy speed. I'm kind of low to the ground. And right before I hit, I'm going to barely pull back on the pitch and cut it. That's kind of how you want to land. Like I said, you're not going to land on the battery right side up every time. So this is a four cell battery, uh, which it uh, top power is uh, 4.20 volts each. Uh, that'll get us a 16.8 volts. So you don't want to drop below, I believe, 3.5 volts on your battery, which would give you right around um, 14 uh, volts altogether. So I can still fly this battery some. Um, I'm not going to at the moment, but I want you to be aware that you do not want to drain your battery um, past a certain point. Uh, will it explode on you? Uh, probably not, but it will definitely ruin your battery in the long run. And you could potentially drop out of the sky, injuring yourself, somebody else, or breaking your quad if you uh, run it too long. Alright guys, so we have accomplished our maiden voyage with our FPV quad out in the open with a spotter, all safety precautions were taken and it was a pretty uh, successful run. One of the biggest hurdles is finding people to fly with. Go on Facebook, look for FPV groups. Um, 
Don't be scared to put yourself out there. Go out there, find a group of guys. Don't be scared to take it slow for the first couple months. I see a lot of guys get into the sport. They want to go fast. They want to do all the cool tricks. But I'm telling you, take it slow. Work your way up to that. Your life's going to be a lot easier. You won't be spending money on parts. You won't be constantly fixing your quad. Um, it's just going to be a lot better for you in the long run. Definitely. So check out Seth on his YouTube channel. Um, and also, if you're interested in some of the equipment that we use, some of the gear, the video descriptions have links to most of those. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy flying.